This is video 17 in a series. To see the rest of the series, please click on the links in the description below. Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man has long hair, it is a dishonor to him? But if a woman has long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given to her for a covering. So what does this word nature mean in these verses? Is Paul speaking about the natural world, the way things are because God created them that way? What we sometimes refer to as mother nature? Or is Paul speaking about what is called second nature? Things that we accept or do simply because we have been conditioned that way through long habit by our human culture. In other words, is Paul speaking here of the nature which God created or the nature which man created? The Greek word translated as nature is phusis. This word occurs 14 times in the New Testament. It is Strong's number 5449. And a brief definition from Bible Hub is nature, inherent nature, origin, birth. Properly, inner nature, the underlying constitution or makeup of something. Here are all the places in the New Testament where phusis occurs. Some think that in Ephesians 2, Phusis is an example of second nature, something learned from human culture. That can be argued, and I'll put more about that in the description below this video. But whether phusis means second nature in Ephesians 2 or not, phusis certainly means the nature that is God's creation in Romans 1, since homosexuality is definitely against the way humans were created. The question is, what does phusis mean in 1 Corinthians 11? Where it says, where Paul says that even nature itself teaches us. Well, by looking at the context, I can see what phusis means. In the first place, Paul says, even nature itself. Does not even nature itself teach you? That doesn't sound like how he would refer to human custom, does it? If it read even human custom itself, that would sound pretty silly. Human custom just isn't that important. It does not deserve the intensifier. For example, when Jesus said, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. By including the word even, he was saying that the ultimate in man's glory cannot equal the glory of the lily of the field. Because Solomon was not just any of Israel's kings, but he was the wisest, the richest, and the strongest of them. Of all Israel's kings, Solomon had the most glory. He was the epitome of earthly glory. And in the same way, in 1 Corinthians 11, the word even shows that Paul is using the highest of the possible meanings. That tells me that the word nature is referring to God's creation, not man's creation. And in the second place, the context tells me that the woman's long hair is her glory, for it was given to her as a covering. Who gave woman her hair? Obviously God did. And since God gave it to her to be her glory, I don't see what human custom has to do with it. 
When did God give woman her hair? Obviously at the creation. The dishonor and the glory are a lesson taught us by the nature of God's creation, built into us by our Creator at the beginning of time. It's got nothing to do with any human custom. So how and what does nature teach us? Well, Psalms 19 tells us that the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. When I was a teacher, this is what I would do. I would stand in front of my class and I would utter speech and I would reveal knowledge. So the scripture is telling us that nature, in this case, a huge part of God's creation, the heavens, the heavens and the firmament, day and night, they're speaking to us and they're teaching us a lesson and the lesson is about God's glory. Then when we look at Psalm 8, it says, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? So when we consider this part of God's creation, when we listen to nature, nature teaches us a lesson. And the lesson is that man is humbled by God's glory. I mean, just think about the heavens, how they go, even with the big telescopes, the most sophisticated instruments that man has been able to invent, you can't see the end of outer space. The galaxies and all the, the myriad of stars and planets and comets and all that stuff, and that was created by God. We need to be humble. That's the lesson that nature is teaching us in Psalms 8. So we go from a huge part of nature to a tiny part of nature. Proverbs 6 says, Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which, having no captain, overseer, or ruler, provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. Have you ever watched some little ants? When I was a kid, I would watch, there would be a whole line of them, and they each had a crumb. But they didn't have a sergeant or something, or an overseer that was making them stay in line. They did that all by themselves. They have no captain, overseer, or ruler, but they worked. So the lesson that nature is teaching us in this tiny part of nature is to work hard. Don't be slothful. That's what we learn from considering the ant. And we can be wise. So that means nature is teaching us. Then in Job 12, Job is talking to his friends and uh, He's saying, now ask the beasts, and the beasts, and they will teach you, and the birds of the air, and they will tell you, or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, and the fish of the sea will explain to you. Nature, all those things are a part of nature, 
and nature is teaching us. Who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this, in whose hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? So the lesson that nature is teaching us here, my life is in his hand. That's the lesson that I need to learn from nature. And let's look at Romans 1 last. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, and so on. What are the things that are made? The things that are made are nature, mother nature, God's creation. What God has made teaches us about God. And Romans 1 tells us that these things are clearly seen. So we can see that God's creation, what we call nature, has important lessons to teach us if we will just open our eyes and ears. So what does nature, what does God's creation teach us about our hair? Well, when we consider the heavens, they teach us about God's glory, but they don't teach us about our hair. When we consider the ant, she teaches us about hard work, but she doesn't teach us about our hair. And if we look at the animals, that doesn't help us. For example, it's the male lion that has the mane, not the female lioness. And this is just the opposite of what Paul says about human beings in this passage. We need to consider our own creation. Human beings are the crown of God's creation. What does our own nature, the way we were created, teach us about long hair for humans? Next video, Human Nature.